All right, everyone. So I want to talk to you guys about woke marketing and why I suspect the whole thing is just a giant psyop. So Jaguar recently put out a commercial and the commercial is woke and the commercial has been getting a huge backlash. And I took some time to look at the commercial and yes, it is indeed woke insanity. Uh, it looks like a mix between that movie Mandy starring Nicolas Cage. And if you were having a uh, an LSD trip in the middle of Willy Wonka's factory, only in this case, Willy Wonka is celebrating pride. And so I spent about two seconds looking at this commercial. And yes, it is indeed just uh, insane asylum tier stuff. It's just insanity. It's nightmarish. It's bizarre. It's unappealing. It's grotesque. And so I took some time to look at the comments. And of course, the comments do not disappoint. So I'm just going to read uh, the first two comments here. Jaguar's pronouns are was slash were. And the only thing brave about this ad is to leave the comments section on. And so every time we see these companies doing woke marketing, what happens? These companies get a huge backlash. So the question I have is, why are these companies doing woke marketing? There are only two possibilities that I can think of. One is that these companies are truly, truly out of touch with the rest of society. They are truly disconnected from the rest of society. And they really believe that wokeism is an effective marketing strategy. Or, and this is me putting on my conspiracy theory hat, there is a psyop at hand there is a psychological operation being done now why would the elites to use this term why would the elites be interested in pushing wokeism as a psychological operation well right-wingers would say that it's because the elites hate white men and they want to weaken white men and that's the reason why they want white men to put on dresses and to take some weird hormone pills to make them uh, feminine and all this stuff. And I would say perhaps that's exactly what the elites want you to suspect. Perhaps that's exactly what the elites want you to believe. They want you to believe that there is a conspiracy to make you feminine, to make you transgender, to weaken men. Perhaps they want you to believe that there is a conspiracy to weaken men so that men will become more masculine as a response against wokeism and transgenderism. And so what I suspect is happening here is some sort of a uh, some sort of a dialectic where on one hand you have wokeism being pushed and they're saying men should put on dresses or men should uh, experiment with transgenderism or some crazy stuff like that. And on the other hand, you have the masculinist response against wokeism. You have the Andrew Tates, you have uh, the, the Joe Rogans, you have these types of people responding against wokeism saying men should be masculine men should be lifting weights men should be training in martial arts men should be tough and if you think about it i mean there, there's not really a you don't have to believe in a conspiracy theory to see this i mean there really is a struggle going on here just at face value if there is no conspiracy at hand there is indeed a a struggle going on here on one side you have the wokest and the transgenderist and on the other side you have the masculinists and the masculinists are saying no men need to be tough men should not be putting on dresses that's not natural and so maybe the conspiracy is to spark outrage against wokeism so that men will feel a motivation a sense of internal motivation to become tougher maybe the psychological operations if there is a psychological operation, maybe its purpose is to get men to think, wow, I don't want to be this weak, left-wing, limp-wristed weakling. I want to be tough and strong like David Goggins or Andrew Tate or Joe Rogan. Man, I should be training in jiu-jitsu. I should be training in kickboxing. I should be doing jiu-jitsu. I should be doing martial arts. I should be lifting weights. I should be losing weight. I don't want to be feminine. I don't want to have man titties. I want to be strong. I want to be lean. I want to be muscular. 
And so maybe this, if there is a conspiracy at hand here, and uh, these co companies uh, really are part of this conspiracy, if there is a conspiracy at hand and these companies uh, are truly uh, not out of touch and they're part of the conspiracy, uh, perhaps the whole reasoning behind it is to get men to get motivated to be tougher as a response against the woke ideology. Just a thought. I could be completely wrong. I'm just pontificating here. I'm just doing a stream of consciousness type of a video here. Now, why would the elites, to use the term liberally, be interested in doing this uh, psychological operation if that is their motivation to get men to be tougher? Well, think about it. What is the military's biggest problem right now? Getting recruits. That's the military's biggest problem is getting men to join the military. Men don't want to join the military because really there's nothing to fight for. What in the hell are we going to fight for? Are we going to fight for the Rainbow Mafia? Are we going to fight for the LGBT? Are we going to fight for men to put on dresses? What in the hell are we doing here? Like why in the hell would we want to fight for the U.S. military or for NATO when uh, the elites hate us or the uh, you know or the the US government is feminizing the military and what we're just gonna fight for some some elites or, or for some really rich people whatever we don't want to do that the last time the military had a really easy time recruiting people was back in the day after 9/11 happened right after 9/11 happened there was a huge rate of men joining the military uh, there was a, a huge number of men who were very very enthusiastic and willing to join the military because of course thousands of Americans were butchered on American soil in a terrorist attack so obviously you're gonna have a lot of angry American men joining the military and so they joined the military and then they told these American men to go fight against terrorism in Iraq and in Afghanistan and then people began to wake up to all of this stuff thanks to the internet uh, because uh, with the internet you have social media you have alternative media uh, sources you have alternative media publications not just the mainstream publications and so people began to uh, look outside of the mainstream narrative about the Iraq war and they realized that people were lied to they realized that they were lied to there were no weapons of mass destruction and that the war in Iraq really had nothing to do with 9-11 so people got pissed off about that and there has been a major major decline in willingness to even join the US military so how do we revive right I'm just putting my mind in the mind of people who want to make america strong again make america militarist again how are we going to get the american man motivated to get tougher or to become more patriotic well how about we empower the most liberal faction in america how about we empower not the most liberal but the most wacky liberal faction in america empower that faction and they are the most bizarre, they are the most kooky, they are the most just bizarro world faction of the liberals, the woke left. We empower those woke liberals, make it seem like they're the ones in charge, make it seem like they're really in power, make it seem like they're taking over the country. And then we get all the responses against wokeism. We get all of these influencers to talk against wokeism. And then we get this masculinist response against wokeism. And we get American men to think that there is a war on them, that there is a war on masculinity. And then what are American men going to do once they are angry uh, about this attack on masculinity? Well, they're going to become more masculine and give it time let that masculinism cultivate itself let it grow and get bigger and let it become a major movement in the united states and then something is going to happen along the line there's going to be some big terrorist attack there's going to be some kind of a disaster in america and then people will be motivated to join the military patriotism will be high the marketing for the military will be anti-woke or masculinist in some sense. And I'm not saying that this is all going to happen 100%. Again, I'm just thinking out loud. I'm just putting out a scenario that possibly could happen. 
And so perhaps the reason why they're pushing wokeism is to get a masculinist response so as to revive American patriotism. And if you can revive American patriotism, then you can reinvigorate American men to be enthusiastic about joining the military. Again, I'm not saying this is happening 100%. I'm saying that this could be happening. I'm saying this is just my own pontification. This is my own uh, brainstorming here where I'm just making some observations and I'm coming up with a theory. This is just this is just a hypothesis here. But it wouldn't surprise me if this is truly the case, because think about it. The U.S. government really, really screwed up with the Iraq war, really screwed up. They thought, well, you know, Americans, they're really patriotic. We can just take advantage of them and we'll tell them that there's weapons of mass destruction. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll say that Saddam Hussein had some kind of connection to 9-11. We'll get these American guys all riled up. It's not that difficult to get them pissed off at some foreign enemy. And then we'll get them to join the military. It'll be easy. Israel wants us to to remove Saddam Hussein. We're going to help our ally Israel. We're going to help our ally Saudi Arabia. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll tell them that it has to do with fighting terrorism and protecting American democracy and protecting and preserving the American way of life. Yeah, we'll bullshit them. Well, they can't bullshit people like they did back in the day. So now the average American person is looking at the military and saying, why in the hell should I fight in the war? Who am I going to fight for? Israel? Who am I going to fight for? Ukraine? Who am I going to fight for? Some woke craziness? And so there is a huge problem in the military about... There's a huge problem over getting recruits, over getting American men to be incentivized, motivated to join the military. So how are they going to revitalize the American spirit to be enthusiastic about military recruitment, military enlistment? How are they going to do that? How are they going to, how are they going to revive the American militarist spirit? There has to be a way. Well, we can do maybe a terrorist attack, something. But even if you have a terrorist attack, what's going to happen? People are just going to say, well, yeah, the reason why we're having terrorism is because we keep allowing terrorists into the country and because we keep we keep doing the, the this, this insane foreign policy in the Middle East. America needs to self-isolate. So even if you have a terrorist attack, it's still it, just a terrorist attack is not going to revitalize and uh, revive the American militarist spirit. Uh, terrorism is not going to do that by itself. You need to have a complete revival of the American soul. You need to have a refreshment, a renourishment, a revitalization of the American militarist mindset. How do you do that? And believe me, the Pentagon, I'm pretty certain, has discussions about this sort of problem. I'm pretty certain they brainstorm ideas as to how to fix this how to fix this problem and i'm looking at the whole wokeism stuff and i'm thinking wait a second this these woke commercials don't work people just get pissed off at them people are turning more to masculinism as a response against wokeism so if these companies are truly about just making money then why in the hell are they doing commercials that are quite obviously not going to work what is the motivation what's the bottom line here if the motivation isn't money, then what is it? There must be, or there could be, some kind of an agenda that is outside of financial interest. What is it? I'm going to say, putting on my conspiracy theory hat, I'm going to say it could be that there is a PSYOP being done to grow the masculinist movement in this country. And that's possibly the reason why you see people like Jocko Willink and David Goggins being so famous. Because what? Jocko Willink is what? He's a Navy SEAL. Right? He 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 is there. He has a very uh, popular podcast on YouTube. And he is there getting Americans to be proud, cultivating that pride for the American military. Here's a Navy SEAL. He's very tough. He's a jiu-jitsu guy. He lifts weights. He lifts kettlebells. He wakes up at 4.30 a.m. every single day. Uh, he's a very tough guy. He's inspiring people. He's very pro-military. I want to be like Jocko Willink. So, uh, and then you have David Goggins. Here's David Goggins. This guy was, what, a Green Beret? He was a Navy SEAL. He is a very accomplished military um, uh, man. 
and he represents American militarism, patriotism. He represents that old school American impenetrable spirit. He really, really represents Americana. He represents American toughness and he inspires people and he's very famous. And perhaps these figureheads are, are being pushed by the powers that be to get people to become more enthusiastic about being tough, being strong, lifting weights, doing jujitsu, and being enthusiastic about militarism, being enthusiastic about fighting for your country. Just a thought. It's just a thought because there is right now, and everyone knows this, there is right now a huge shift that has been going on against the established order. Whether it's the mainstream media, whether it's mainstream politicians, whether it's uh, mainstream styles of, of entertainment, whether it's the video game industry, whether it's cinema, there has been a huge backlash against the establishment. And so this uh, also involves uh, backlash against the international order. And what's the international order? NATO. NATO is the international order. And so people don't want to fight for NATO. They're not saying, hey, I, I really want to fight for NATO. They're not getting up saying, hey, I really want to fight for Israel. And, there, and part of the international order is also Israel. And a huge part of American foreign policy is Israel. America does a lot of things for the interest of Israel. Israel wanted Saddam Hussein to be removed. Israel uh, wants a war against Iran. So America is helping Israel against Iran, against Syria, against Hezbollah. If you look at what's been going on in Syria with this new wave of rebel violence against the Syrian government, uh, the rebels who are fighting against the Syrian government and the Russians are rebels who are backed by NATO. So this this uh, revival in the Syrian revolution is obviously uh, being done, being orchestrated by NATO. These rebels are being backed by Turkey. And uh, just a couple of days ago, Israel said that Bashar al-Assad will pay a price for supporting Hezbollah. And I'm wondering if this wave of, of uh, rebel violence in Syria uh, is the fulfillment of that threat done by Israel. But you see... Uh, part of America's foreign policy is to help Israel. And so people, American men, are looking at this whole situation and they're thinking, okay, I'm going to join the military for who? Ukraine? I don't give a shit about Ukraine. Israel? I don't give a shit about Israel. So they're going against the, the, they're going against the established order. And part of the established order is Israel helping Ukraine, that sort of thing. And so the established order is not appealing None of that is appealing. So how are you going to get, how are you going to make the military appealing to the average American male? You can't say, oh, well, we're gonna help our, our ally Israel. We have to help the Jewish people because people don't care about Israel anymore. That whole boomer generation is, uh, you know, the whole boomer generation that's super pro-Israel is very disconnected from what millennials are thinking, what Zoomers are thinking. And soon they're gonna be disconnected from uh, what Generation Alpha is going to be thinking. And you have boomers who are very pro-Israel. They want uh, America to protect Israel and all this stuff. But that line of thinking is dissipating. It's dying out. So how are you going to appeal to millennial men? How are you going to appeal to Zoomer men to join the military? You can't say, well, we have to go out and help the international order for democracy. That's, that's not going to work. You have to revive American patriotism. That's the bottom line. You have to revive American patriotism. How do you do that? You have to make a boogeyman that gets you to think that there is a war being done by insidious elites against your masculinity. They want you to put on a dress. They want you to put on hormone pills. They want you to drink estrogen and they want you to have man titties. And so a lot of these average guys are going to look themselves in the mirror. They're going to say, I don't really like the way I look. I'm kind of flabby. I'm kind of pudgy. I'm fat. I don't like the way I look. And then what, what are they seeing when they're scrolling through their phones, when they're scrolling through Instagram shorts, YouTube shorts, TikTok? What are they seeing? Jocko Willink, Andrew Tate. David Goggins, and what are these guys telling them? 
Stop being a bitch. That's what they're telling them. Stop being a pussy. Get tough. Get good. Get strong. Stay hard. That's what David Goggins always says. Stay hard. And so these, a lot of men are getting motivated to t- do martial arts, weight training, all that stuff. And so they're trying to, I, I suspect that there is a uh, psychological operation to revive American masculinity, masculinity in general, masculinity is masculinity, but masculinity with an American face, with the spirit of Americana. And they're doing this to incentivize people to be enthusiastic about the military again, because the military is kind of becoming this skeleton of its former self in which you have people joining the military, not because they're patriotic, but because they just want a job because the U.S. military is always hiring. Well, the U.S. military needs to get beyond that sort of thing if they want a revival of American patriotism. Uh, You have to have a... You have... Military success is not just about getting people into the military. It's also about spirit. Spirit, morale, willingness, all of these things. I think... uh, I think Napoleon Bonaparte said something like, morale is 90% of the battle or something like that. Yeah, he said something to the likes of that. But morale is super, super important. So how do you get people not just in the ranks of the military, but also how do you get them to be enthusiastic about the military? You have to give them something to fight for. You have to get them to believe that they're fighting for something greater than themselves. And so you have to bring back a masculine spirit if you're going to get that to work. So I'm suspecting this whole woke thing is just a big psyop to get people to be more masculine. And like I said, if you can get people to be more masculine, you can get people to become more patriotic. And then you can get people to become more enthusiastic about military recruitment. That's my theory. I, again, I could be completely wrong. It's quite possible that these uh, companies are just completely out of touch, that they're disconnected and all that stuff. But I just refuse to believe that we the people know that these types of commercials don't work, but the people running the companies don't know. I just have difficulty believing that. Anyway, those are my thoughts on that. You guys just heard some Theo Logi. God bless. <laughs>